Today I'm going to be giving you my three best drills for practicing golf indoors without a simulator. I will be walking you through my exact thought process and reveal many key techniques that have allowed me to play at the highest level. Yeah, so I saw all you guys' comments and you guys kept saying, can't you do a bunker, it's too cold out, it's not the right time of the year, um, all I have is a hitting you know, net, all I got is a mat. I'm here to answer your questions. All you need is masking tape. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of go over what Rick Shields uh, and I went over in that lesson. Most people are like, how do I write in the turf? How do I you know, put a line in the turf? Well, you can put masking tape in the turf. So you get a piece of tape, tape it down. But another thing you do is put a Sharpie line in it if you wanna draw on your turf. I don't wanna draw on my turf. You can spray paint it, you can, you can do a bunch of different things, but you can put a piece of line down, whatever you designate, whether it's painter's tape, Sharpie, chalk line. You can even do a chalk line. You just put a chalk line down uh, and you'll see if you're striking in front of it or not. But this is a great way right here to start out. So get your 60 degree, set your line down. So it's like a starting line. And so if you chunk it, you're immediately gonna pull up that tape. Right? And if you hit in front of it, you're not gonna hit the tape. So the goal here is to feel like you fractionally just clip the front edge of that tape and make sure that your divot is in front of that line. And again, you're gonna see on the AstroTurf, look at this. You'll see it just barely start peeking up here and then there's a lot of turf coming up there. So I know that I'm hitting it after the line. It's a great visual aid and it's also a way to practice if you're not in the sand, if you don't have sand, and it's too cold out. You don't need a simulator for this. All you need is just a piece of turf, a net. Shoot, if, even if you don't have a net, like you can practice this on a piece of turf. So I'm gonna start warming up now with it. Let me get my glove on. Boom, set the ball just right up in front of the line. Right there. And there we go, perfect strike. That's how you do it. You just warm up with this. It's a great visual aid. Something that's easy, simple for you to do while you're at home. I like this, this is so nice. I, it just reminds me too of what's important on the golf course. I forget so often how important strike is, making sure that you're hitting ball divot first. Man, that's just primo. So let me give you an example of what it's gonna look like if you miss hit a shot. I think everybody knows what a thin shot is, right? So that's a thin shot, you're not gonna see much go up. It's gonna feel bad. If you chunk it, you're really gonna notice. That tape's gonna go right off with you. <laughs> so take it, you can put it back down if it's sticky enough. If not, replace it with another piece. But this is what I used to do on turf. We would actually do a chalk line or spray paint back in the, the shy tent from a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this just gives you straight instant feedback. Obviously I chunked that so you see a break in the line, right? That's a huge deal uh, for you to know what that feels like. I think chalk line could be very helpful, but this gives you true instant feedback. If you chunk it, it's gonna come right with you. And so you gotta replace it, you gotta spend the time to do it right and set it up correctly so that the next time you do it, hopefully you hit shots more like that. It's a great tip for everybody that is hitting indoors when it's cold out. Boom, I mean, I can do that right on the edge. This is a great drill for every one of you at home. I would say a good metric to go off of if you wanna be consistent up to, a, let's say a 10 handicap level, you gotta be able to hit this thing, I'd say five times in a row. If you can do five times in a row, you're well on your way to breaking uh, the 10 handicap level. If you wanna be a scratch golfer, I'd say you gotta hit this about 10, 10 times probably, 10 to, to 12 times is when you can start feeling like you're close to becoming a scratch golfer with the uh, consistency that you can produce. And then like a tour player, we can do it 20, 20 times pretty easily without making a mistake. I think that's something that a lot of people miss is that they focus on, oh, I did it once and oh, that's good enough, I know how to do it. No, golf is not a game of, oh, I can do it once. So it just goes to show you, it's not about what you can do, it's about how many can you do. I think that's a huge key that most people don't realize. And in order to be one of the best golfers in the world, that's the level you've gotta to get to. That's the level of thought that you have to get to in order to maintain that level of ball striking, consistency in your game to play at the highest level. You've gotta be able to do this once twice, three times. And as you get better at it, you're gonna start seeing your ball striking improving over the course of time, lowering your handicap, getting to a place where you can consistently, consistently hit good shot after good shot, which is the key to the game. It's not about how good your good shots are, it's about how good your bad shots are. 
most important thing in the game of golf right there. The second piece of advice that I would give you after you feel pretty confident with striking the ball very well, consistently, is putting two tees in the ground to make sure you're hitting it in the middle of the club face, not hitting it on the toe, not hitting it on the heel. And again, you can leave this here if you want, but I'm gonna put a tee in the AstroTurf, right? Just like that, I'm gonna lean the shaft over so that when I go through it, I'm not gonna hit it. So the middle of it, I'd clip that. So that's why I'm making it wide so that, so when this goes through, it doesn't catch anything. It's hit right in the middle. So put two tees out, kind of like Tiger's drill with a putter. Make sure he's hitting it in the, in the right place. So a massive benefit for beginning golfers too, is if you're hitting indoors, you get to really focus on how you strike the ball, especially if you don't have technology. You can really focus on how you strike the ball. And this is why the three, these three keys that I'm gonna give you are so important, because you're gonna learn to strike it well first, have the right ball divot, angle of attack, and radius going through impact. And then the next piece, number two, is which, which I'm talking about, is the ability to hit in the center of the club face. You don't wanna hit it over here, you don't wanna hit it over here. You don't wanna hit it on the toe, you don't wanna hit it on the heel. You wanna focus on hitting it right in the middle of the face. And so, that tiger drill where he's using his putter and putting the tee on the toe and the heel and making sure he's striking it right in the middle, this is the same drill. You can relate that to a golf shot as well. So putting two tees down and then being able to hit it right in the middle with no tees being struck. Now I chunked it just a little bit. That's why the, the blue tape kind of came up. But again, that's a good thing to know. Now you don't have to have this down. You can just do two tees if you want. So I can pull this up and just focus on center contact every time and again going back to the same principle if I want to get this to where I'm hitting it five to ten times in a row where I'm not even touching a tee and you're just going to keep leveling up again if you can do it five times in a row you're probably 10 handicap golfer if you can do it ten times in a row probably pretty close to somewhat of a scratch if you do it 15 in a row you're getting up there 20 in a row well yeah, you know how to control the golf ball I'll tell you that right now control where you're striking it on the face too. But I can pretty much do this on command all the time. So, so let me go to like another iron real quick, just hitting an eight iron, I'm gonna do a full swing so you guys get the effect of it. And there's some space here, there's, there's a little bit of room. If I was to hit it poorly, right? If I was to hit it super far on the toe, I would then hit the heel, right? With the tee. And then the toe would be struck by the golf ball. And then if I was to shank it, I would have the toe uh, strike that T on the right side, and then I would obviously hit the shaft with the golf ball. So that's what it would look like. I'll hit it on the toe, and you'll see the heel ball or the heel T uh, go to Narnia. I have no idea where it went. <laughs> that's pretty much a simple basis of what. Oh, there it is. Uh, all right, so let's do a full swing. And that's just me not even thinking about it. I used to do this <laughs> as a kid for hours during a day. If I had eight hours of practice, which I was a little bit of uh, an addict with the game of golf, uh, I'd probably do two or three hours of just drilling this sort of thing. That's if you really want to get better. But again, it's a great drill. If you're just warming up or getting started, trying to get comfortable with where the face is, those two tips will be tremendously helpful. Once again, this is all about instant visual feedback, and that's what you get with the T-drill. That was perfectly struck right there. Then the third, and I would say the most important thing in elevating your game, although it's the most difficult indoors, I like giving everybody a difficult task at the end of these videos because I want people to see what the top level is of ball control. Not only can you strike it well, going into the ground, also hit it in the center of the face, there's also ball control, right? You have, you have body control, club control, ball control. Those are the three things that are super important. You have body control to have an angle of attack that goes into the ground properly. Swing control, which allows you to get the club head moving on the right trajectory. And then ball control, which you're controlling the face angle and how it's moving. The third drill is super simple. All you're gonna do is take the masking tape, put it down the starting line, which is where your ball is. So it may not be in the center of your net, although it could be. So wherever the ball is, you're going to set that down and then draw a straight line all the way, so it may not be in the center, but let's just say it's right here for fun. You put a line down the net, and you can work on your starting line. So if you're starting left or right of your target line. So 
All you have to do, set the, the ball up in line with it, and you can see when you hit the shots where you're starting it. You can really show yourself how you're cutting or drawing the ball, right? I was right of it, you can see where it went in. Uh, this is just great visual feedback for a golfer that's trying to improve their game. You know, if I really wanted a big cut, I'm gonna open the face, swing along my feet line, and start it left, and it's gonna come back. So getting yourself to get comfortable starting it in different places, making sure that one, first drill, you have the proper angle of attack, you're in ball divot first. Two, you're striking it in the middle of the face in accordance with those tees. And then three, you're making sure you're starting the ball where you want to. All three of those things are gonna be key in helping you elevate your game. Indoors, when it's cold out, you get nowhere to go, and you get a mat and a net. Those three things will transform your game. Right? Just like that, that didn't work. I can, a little bit over the tie and I just ripped it right through the middle. <laughs>